Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church. We're so glad that you've joined us. I have a few announcements before we start today. First of all, the Catepa Lake Camp AGM is at 1 p.m. today at West Hill Park Church right after the service. So please, if you uh, would like to be involved with the camp, go there and check that out. There is a lunch provided as well right after the church service today. As well, during the summer, we will be hosting, uh, sorry, we're always hosting, we will be running a few of the Saturday lunches this summer. We have a wonderful group of churches around Regina who take care of buying the groceries and making the sandwiches and doing everything we need to make our Saturday lunch work. And we will be doing a, uh, a few of those this summer, the first one being July 1st. So this Saturday, we are looking for volunteers to come. And I have to tell you, I came a couple weeks ago and it was a really great experience. It, everything is run so smoothly. You just come, listen to what you're told to do. You make some sandwiches, bag them up, and then the people come uh, from off the street. And I was really impressed by how these people know that Saturday lunch is here at 12.30 every Saturday, and they count on that for their week, and they plan their day around that. And it was really touching to me that it makes a difference to them. So I hope that you will have a chance to come out and, and be part of that. So again, that's this Saturday at 10.30. So about 10.30 to 1.30 is approximately the time commitment. Also for that, we really need some donations. People look for things like toiletries, feminine hygiene products, toilet paper is a really um, exciting thing. We just have a giveaway table at the side. If there's other things that you have that you would like to give away, please bring them by the church and we will happily put them out. And finally, next Sunday, there will be a barbecue at my farm. So any of you who've heard me talk about my sheep or my chickens or my, I don't talk about the chickens that much, but the sheep more, <laughs> or the horses or the cows um, and our property. We have a beautiful property with some walking paths and, um, and the animals. And I would, we would like to invite you to come out to our place at five o'clock Sunday afternoon. There is a sign up sheet. If you could please help us by signing up this week, either on one of these sign up sheets that will be available at the back and uh, let us know if you're coming. And also there are people who would like a ride. It is in the country. So I know gravel roads sometimes discourage people from coming. So if, if you're okay with taking some people, if you could just note that on here, or if you think you need a ride, we'll, we'll see who signs up and we'll, we'll see if we can get you there, okay? Also, there are instructions for how to get to my place. There's written instructions and a map that will be available after the service at the back this week and also next week. So the barbecue is next Sunday, not this Sunday. And I think that is all our announcements this morning. So let us join in worship. Let's stand together as we sing our intro to God be the glory. Let's stand together.
us give thanks to the Lord and call upon the name of the Lord. Sing praises to God and tell of all of God's wonderful works. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we gather this morning to remember your faithfulness. You have been faithful to our people from the beginning of time. You have been faithful to us, and we thank you for the ways that you have shown us grace and love and provided for our every need. May we think of ways to show you that today. Amen. I always forget that. Welcome in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Please welcome one another. we sing, and can it be?
Thank you. Please be seated. Well, this morning for the children's blessing, we have a very special celebration. This is the Sunday when we honor grads. It's also a Sunday when we do some other honoring. So we're going to start with a presentation about some music scholarships. So I'm going to invite Hillary forward to do that. I'm on a high, wonderful singing, inspiring. <laughs> Let me just catch my breath. Uh, 1988, oh, I'm representing uh, Louise Kruger, Hillary and I. Uh, Louise Kruger, our music director, is on her way to Calgary and she asked if I would please step in in her place. In 1988, the Sanctuary Choir and Music Ministry team decided that this was a warm and welcoming church a church family that appreciated, encouraged, helped children and youth discover and exercise their gifts. And we decided that we wanted to recognize some of these children and some of these youth. I was brought up in First Baptist Church, a warm and welcoming church, a church that appreciated, encouraged, helped discover, and helped Ex uh, the children and youth exercise their gifts. That impacted my life. The senior pastor who imp impacted my life at the time was Dr. C. Howard Bentall, a renowned one of our pastors in the 40s. When I accepted a call here, I went to him to seek his blessing. And little did I realize that I was coming to a church that had the same characteristics as my home church. There have been many prominent people in the music ministry of this church, and we have four music scholarships. The junior, uh, the Rita Usher Junior Scholarship. Rita Usher was a member of the choir for over 70 years, was very involved in the church and in the community, up until she was 100. She was still arranging bunny bus to take her here and there throughout the week. Ruth Nelson was a member of the choir from the age of 14 for over 70 years, filled in as organist, filled in as director, filled in as secretary, filled in as church librarian. We have the Ruth Nelson Intermediate Scholarship. Shirley Eaton Senior Scholarship, a very prominent member of the Sanctuary Choir known as Miss Fun. And then we had the Jean Graham, Graham Music and Service Scholarship. And Louise shared a story. She said, Jean was my school teacher. She taught me so much about life. This morning, we're going to recognize some of the young people who have an attitude of giving and sharing, who have an attitude of doing something within the church community and within the community at large. Rita Usher Junior Scholarship is being presented to Maisie Russell McLean. If Maisie would please come forward. The Ruth Nelson Intermediate Scholarship is presented to Peregrine Holtzlander. The Shirley Eaton Senior Scholarship to Adoniram Holtzlander. The Jean Graham Music and Service Scholarship, and I want to say something about Jean Graham. Jean Graham was responsible, her family was responsible for providing the, his kids with choir gowns. Her family got together and they made all of those white gowns. The handbell choir that we enjoy uh, once a month, 
uh, most of those handbells were donated by a donation from Jean, Ann, uh, Jean Graham. She knew uh, before she passed away that we were looking forward to having the fifth octave, and she made it very clear in her will that this amount of money was to go to the purchase. She was an encourager of the music ministry of young people and of children. The Jean Graham Music and Service Scholarship is presented to Xavier Russell McLean. These are your music leaders now and hopefully into the future. Well done. I'm on. There we go. That organ really made you guys even sound better. <laughs> you are in good company. Thank you, Olashe. Uh, so the next part, we have a little bit more. Thank you for sitting so nicely. We at this church like to honor our grads. Now, our grads are not, they are the people who are graduating, for instance, from grade 12. But we also like, we have different groups in our church. So we have our nursery which is generally for children up to age three. And then once they are three, they go to godly play. And in godly play, they learn there until they're in grade two. And then in grade two, they go up to Oasis, which goes till grade six. And so we like to uh, commemorate the move from one of those groups to the next. And also today, we want to uh, remember those who are going into high school. That's a big jump going from elementary school to high school. And then we have some that are going beyond. So we are going to take a few minutes. I have some, something to give to each of our grads, and then we're going to all say a prayer for them at the end of that. So I'm going to invite each of the grads to come forward one by one and stand at the front and just stay at the front until we're done our prayer, okay? So the first, we have Hamza Garuka. Would you come forward, Hamza? I'm just gonna grab a gift for you here. You can come stand right here beside me, okay? Hamza is going to be moving from Godly Play into Oasis in the fall. So congratulations. Can you stay here for a minute? Okay. We'll hold our applause to the end. Okay, so at the, at the very end, after we pray for them, we'll, we'll, we'll applaud just so we don't take the whole entire service, even though it'd be fun. Um, the next person I'd like is Oliver Walbum. So I'd like to invite him forward. Um, so you can just stay up here. Yeah. Oliver is moving from our oasis to our youth group, if you can believe it. That's very exciting. Thank you. Can you just stay up here? And then Maisie Russell McLean, if you could come forward. Maisie. Welcome. And uh, Maisie also is moving into our youth group this fall. And we have one more person. Sorry, I'm standing in your way. <laughs> uh, Cohen, uh, Cohen Shume, who is not here today, but is also moving into our youth group. So we are excited to have them here. The next group that we have are the group uh, who are moving from grade eight to high school. So I would like to invite them forward. I don't see no, if Maddox is here, doesn't look like it. So um, Maddox Yo is moving into high school this year. Peregrine Holtzlander, come on forward, is moving into high school this year. Hard, if you want to just stand on the other side of him there. <laughs> um, Eden Field is joining us on Zoom today, and she is moving into high school this year. And Nuru Garuka is moving into high school this year. You can stand by your brother if you want. Hey, congratulations. And then we have, uh, we do have one student graduating from grade 12 that year, and that's Rowan Russell McLean. 
I would ask him to come forward. Congratulations, Rowan. I know you probably have an exam or two, but we're confident that you will pass. <laughs> so, uh, and then we have um, Adam Johnston, who graduated from SAS Polytech from the Resource and Environmental Law Diploma Program. He's not able to be here either, but we also want to congratulate him. So at this time, I have asked an adult in our congregation to come forward so you may come forward if you've been asked. And I'm just gonna ask you guys at the front here, just spread out just a little bit to leave room for an adult to stand beside you. These adults have promised to pray for you not only today, but going forward as you go into the next stage of your life. I'm not sure where I'm gonna stand, maybe over here. <laughs> in uh, each one of these, students here has gotten a card and in the card uh, I wrote a verse and the verse is from Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 and I hope each of you will read that and take it to heart it says dear graduate trust God from the bottom of your heart don't try to figure out everything on your own listen for God's voice in everything that you do everywhere that you go God's the one that will keep you on track Let's pray together for them. Lord, you have seen each one of these youths before us from conception until this day. You have led them towards you with the help of their families and their church. We pray that you would guard their hearts and their minds as they go forward in the next step of their journey. We pray for Hamza as he moves into Oasis. We thank you for Hamza we pray for wisdom for his parents and community as they help him with things that are difficult and encourage Hamza's gifts. Lord, we ask you to provide what is needed to help Hamza succeed and grow in closer relationship with you. We pray for our ch children who are moving into the youth group. We thank you for Maisie, we thank you for Oliver, and we thank you for Cohen. We pray for wisdom for their parents and community as they help them with the challenges and the opportunities of the teen years. Lord, we ask you to provide what is needed to help them grow into who you created them to be and to grow in a closer relationship with you. We pray for those who are moving into high school this year. We thank you for Peregrine. We thank you for Maddox. We thank you for Eden, and we thank you for Nuru. We thank you for them. We pray for wisdom for them, as well as their parents and their community, as they help these young people with the challenges and the opportunities of high school. Lord, we ask you to provide what is needed to help them grow into who you created them to be, and to grow in closer relationship with you. We pray for Rowan as he graduates from high school. We thank you for Rowan and we pray for wisdom and guidance as high school ends and the opportunities of life and further schooling begin. Lord, we ask you to provide what is needed to help Rowan grow into who you created Rowan to be and to grow in closer relationship with you. And we pray for Adam as he graduates from SAS Polytech. We thank you for Adam and pray for wisdom and guidance as this part of his learning ends and his career begins. Lord, we ask you to provide what is needed to help Adam grow into who you created Adam to be and to grow closer in relationship with you. We lift all these young people up before you, knowing that you, Lord, love them even more than we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now you can give them a round of applause.
What a treat to have so many graduates of different stages this year. That was special to be a part of that. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let's prepare our hearts now for a time of confession. In 1 John 1, it says, this is the message we heard from Jesus. And now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Let us pray together. Lord, your ways are not our ways. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. What to us seems like eternity is only a moment to you. In the face of eternity, help us to be humble. If we have been singing praises with our voices and kept the joy out of our hearts, if we have prayed only for what is possible and hoped only for what we could see, if we have been focused on the big and flashy things of life and failed to see you at work in small and simple ways, if we have taken your grace for granted and expected instant answers to instant requests, if we have forgotten to share your love and grace with the next generation and been too focused instead on our own interests, if we have allowed waiting on your spirit to slip into laziness and waiting on the kingdom to be replaced by apathy, if we have only thought of us waiting on you and never pondered how you wait on us, O oh Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. To all and to each where regret is real, God pronounces pardon and grants us the right to begin again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. Speak, O Lord.
Please be seated. Good morning. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Zechariah 4, 4 to 10. It can be found in your pew Bible, looking like this, on page 881 of the Old Testament section. Zechariah 4, 4 to 10. I asked the angel who talked with me, what are these, my Lord? He answered, do you not know what these are? No, my Lord, I replied. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. What are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of, God bless it, God bless it. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands will also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. Who dares despise the day of small things? Since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerubbabel. The epistle lesson is from Galatians 6, 7 to 10. It's on page 191 of your New Testament section of your pew Bible. Galatians 6, 7 to 10. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. The responsorial psalm is found in your bulletin on page four. Please read responsively. Deal bountifully with your servant so that I may live and observe your word. Open my eyes so that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. I live as an alien in the land. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your ordinances at all times. You rebuke the insolent, accursed ones who wander from your commandments. Take away from me their scorn and contempt for I have kept your decrees. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. Your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. remain standing as you're able for the reading of the gospel lesson, which is found in Matthew 13, 31 to 35, and is in on page 14 and 15 of the New Testament section. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, 
so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. <laughs> we are gathered here again, as we said last week, on Treaty 4 territory. This week, uh, many of you, some of you may have been in the park or at other celebrations on uh, in Canada's Indigenous uh, celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day. Since 1891, First Baptist Church has been gathering here in Regina on the territories of the Cree, the Soto, the Dakota, Lakota, the Nakota people, and the Métis people. We are many of us, the children of settlers or settlers ourselves. We've been welcomed here by another people. I know that for many of us, we look and look, we're looking for signs of hope that there would be reconciliation and that reserves would thrive. And it seems like it is slow work. But God's work often is. It begins in small ways and it grows slowly. As people, we are often discouraged by small starts, by humble beginnings. Sometimes we're so discouraged we feel we've failed before we've even gotten started. It just looks so feeble and vulnerable what we've what we've started with, we give up. And we're bothered by slow progress. We have a whole range of popular expressions that capture this frustration. It's as fun as watching paint dry or the watched pot never boils. Can you think of any others? There's a comedic song that I know and it goes something, uh, I, it, um, you ask how I know about Toledo, Ohio. Well, I spent a week there one day. They've got entertainment to dazzle your eyes. Go sit in the bakery and watch the buns rise. <laughs> Perhaps almost all natural growth in our world starts small and progresses slowly, so slowly that you can't even see it happen if you were to stand there and stare at it. Plants grow, but have you, have you ever tried to capture that moment when it gets a bit bigger? Mountains gain height, the earth turns, the continents move. And our children today that we celebrated, they started off microscopic, but now we see them artists, athletes, workers, thinkers, prayers, friends. They're amazing. And yet, did any of us notice the moment when they grew or when they began to be able to grow in ability? You cannot see it happen in the moment, but as time goes by, you recognize, and I've heard you all say it, my goodness, look at how tall you're getting. And yet growth itself is imperceptible and often painfully slow. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a seed that is growing into a tree. The kingdom of God is like a yeast starter that is being mixed into a huge batch of dough. These two simple illustrations are a profound message of hope and encouragement for us, for our world, for our church, and I hope for you. God is at work through small beginnings. God is at work through slow growth. God is at work bringing about a growth that will fill all things and will provide food and shelter 
and blessing to us, for us and for the world. Over 400 years before Jesus, God's people returned from exile. They had been taken away by the Babylonians, and after a hundred years were coming back to ruined cities. They were rebuilding their homes, their walls, their gates, their government, and the temple. They looked at their small start, their slow progress, and they wept. And so through the prophet Zechariah, God said this, Do not despise the small things. Jesus' story and God's word, the Father's word to us, means hope for this world. So often, especially if you are someone who frequently pays attention to the news, so often we're discouraged. We're confused by the changes in society. And you hear people say, things are just getting worse and worse. Perhaps we are burdened by friends who complain to us, or others who talk about being afraid on the streets, afraid of other people. We are suspicious about what we read and suspicious about our government. We see hurt and pain and violence and deceit and corruption everywhere. And of course, all of us must deal with loss and with death. And so God the Father has commanded us, do not despise the small things. How are we then, in obedience to the Father and to Jesus, how are we to treasure the small seeds around us, the slow growth of the kingdom in this world? The growth that God promises, that Jesus promises, will endure it is the kingdom is what will spread and endure and last do you see signs of growth and of hope perhaps in the midst of all the bad news you might consider the stories we've been hearing from our partnership from our partners in beirut the stories we've been hearing from the cbwc of hundreds of iranians in canada being baptized the stories from our partners in Beirut of the same thing happening in Morocco among Palestinians and Kurds and Syrians and in Sudan. Perhaps some of you know, remember Dave Headland, and you've heard his stories of hope, of having worked with the chiefs of the reserves in Saskatchewan so that the care of foster, indigenous foster children might be moved out of the hands of the provincial government and into the hands of indigenous leaders. Dave would tell you, there are lots of good things happening. There is good news. Or if you're thinking more about our city and infrastructure and businesses, you might walk or drive through our warehouse district. You might see how these old abandoned warehouses and factories are being converted into homes and businesses where people are eating and spending time together and visiting, often being started up by young people who are making that place quite a lovely place to be and walk through. It's well done. There are signs of small seeds and slow growth all around us. And I wonder what the early church would say if we just shared our despair over the state of our society. I wonder instead if they would marvel at the impact that the church has had on Western society. Here we have a whole society really grappling with the powerful force of compassion for every last person on the margin. We have free health care for everyone. Up to 30% of our economy is spent in providing education and health care and welfare programs and charity. Peace and stability and self-control are expected now to the degree that when we encounter something other than that, we're shocked. We don't know where it's coming from. We see it as a failure on the part of that nation or that individual. I think the early church would be amazed that we had such expectations of our society. 
And this is arguably the, the impact of the kingdom spreading and being mixed into the world. Jesus said the kingdom would spread into the whole world and would be a blessing to the whole world. So what small seeds can we celebrate today? Instead of lamenting and fearing as you listen to the news, is there some small growth, slow growth, that you might choose to give thanks for instead? That you might choose to lend your support toward in our city, in our world? Is there some slow work that you might put your shoulder to in our city or in your neighborhood? Jesus' word to us is also a word to this congregation of First Baptist Church. I know to some of you, it feels like we are ending. This is year 132. And I wonder what those first Baptists who gathered in 1891 would say to us today if they saw the collection of people here and the young people here and this building at the center of town, if they heard all that you have accomplished in 132 years, I wonder if they would say this was an ending or if they would see such potential for a new beginning. Please don't give up. Let us instead take God's word to heart and obey the Father and not despise the small things that are starting around us, that are starting, that we might see grow, even if we are coming to the end of our lives. Pray that you might have someone to share the good news about Jesus with, good news that might be a seed that would grow into something in their life and in their heart. And Jesus' word is also for you personally. In each person, young and old, there is a seed <laughs> that has been planted, and it is growing, however slowly. <laughs> it is growing as you grow in faith. It can, if you stare at it, it can, you might almost conclude that nothing is happening. Perhaps uncharitably we stare at one another and think, well, they haven't changed at all. These are words that rob us of life. They are lies. I am of no value. I'm just getting worse. I keep getting worse. I'll never amount to anything. I haven't made any difference in my life. I'm a failure. I'm not good at anything. I've missed all my opportunities. I have no idea what I should do with my life. These are lies. And to entertain these thoughts is to walk in darkness and to lose your way. The Father says, do not despise the small things. And Jesus said, a seed has been planted in you. New life. God's presence and my teaching is slowly being mixed into the whole of your life. It is happening. But what is one small start you could make today? What is one slow-growing thing you could work on in your life? Is it adding prayer every day? Is it opening the scripture every day? Is it asking to be filled with the Holy Spirit and asking someone to pray over you? Is it committing to tithe and to give? Is it committing to use some of your time to help your neighbors or the church or someone else in the city? Is there some relationship you should attend to, someone that you need to forgive? or some person toward whom you have to change your behavior? Is there someone you've been meaning to help? Is there someone you have a sense that you should be talking to about Jesus and about faith? But there is a shadow side to this good story and the story of hope. It is not a choice between letting God's seed grow or just walking away from it. 
Instead, it, you must choose every day between what seeds you will let grow in your life and what slow growth you will let happen, what seeds you will nurture in the world and what slow growth you will watch over and support in the world. Every word we say, every action, every thought that we allow to return to our minds, every thought we dwell on, every feeling that we hold on to, we are choosing either to nurture the kingdom or the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of the world. We are choosing either to serve Jesus, to put Jesus first, to seek Jesus first in our lives, or we are choosing to serve ourselves first. All these seeds grow. This is what we heard from Paul in Galatians. What you, re you reap, whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption, death from the flesh. But if you sow to the Holy Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right. It is as if there are two trees, not just one growing. But one of those trees, we, is our conviction is one of those trees is rotted. It is decaying. It is failing. The other one is all the time growing and growing and maturing and bringing blessing to all creation. One tree will endure, but one will come to nothing and vanish. As a way of illustration, I've been thinking about Bernie Madoff. Some of you may remember him from the um, early 2000s. For decades and decades, it appeared to many that Madoff was brilliant and a genius with money. He brought about great profits for people who invested with him, and he brought them about at a remarkable pace, and so many invested in him. At the same time, others began to investigate and say that they did not see how this could be true or accurate, and they warned against investing in him. And so others chose to put their money elsewhere. The problem with Madoff's investments was it was all built upon lies. He made up figures and reports. He tampered with his reports for decades. For decades, he managed, he was able to manage things. He moved money from one place to another, back and forth quickly, earning just enough to fool investors, and to keep people happy. And then came the economic crisis in 2007. Financial institutions began to fail, and banks locked down their money. They would not loan out. There was nothing governments could do to in induce the banks to give away money. And it became very hard for anyone who was fraudulent to continue what they were doing. And then people needed their money in the midst of the crisis, and they came to him, and he was exposed. There wasn't nearly enough. On paper, people expected $65 billion to be paid out by Madoff. In the bank, Madoff only had hundreds of millions available. In the end, investing in what appeared quick and easy was based on lies. And 20 to $40 billion vanished. It was gone, as if it had never existed. Now, this wasn't judgment, as if some higher power or authority had intervened and caused this misfortune in his life or the life of investors. It could not endure because it was based on a lie. And sooner or later, the light appears and the darkness is shown away, shown for what it is. Or as another popular investor whose name escapes me at the moment says, it's only when the tide goes out that you see who's been swimming without any shorts on. <laughs> Those who invested in something small and slow, their money endured through the hardship. Serving ourselves first, and serving the kingdom of the world is all based on a lie. It will all collapse in on itself. We have seen this again and again in nation after nation. 
when they do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord, it cannot endure. This is a lie that we do not have to belong to Jesus, that we do not have to obey him, that we do not have to seek him, that we can serve ourselves first, that we can believe in ourselves and be ourselves and serve ourselves. But if we build on this, it will all just collapse and vanish. And this will not be the work of God intervening in some sort of punishment, but rather the whole thing cannot endure and be sustained. It will simply collapse and vanish as if it was never there. But if we invest in the small seed, if we invest in the slow growth of prayer, of scripture, of fellowship, of gathering as a church, of serving, of tithing and giving, of being baptized and filled with the Spirit, of ridding everything in our hearts but love, if we invest in this, we are investing in something that will endure, that will continue to grow and mature and be a blessing to us and to our church and to the world. Thanks be to God who gives us this hope and helps us and strengthens us to see it through to the end. Amen. Let us sing about the first seed. I don't know if you remember some of those first days in your life when you knew that God knew you by name and loved you. The first days when you knew Jesus was at your side and even living within you. Let us sing about those days with thanks. Heaven came down. Let's sing together. We stand.
we have reflected together, we have sung together about the many large and small ways that God has blessed us. And now we turn in direct conversation to God. As we pray together today, I invite you to say, thank you, God, after I say, we say together. So we say together, thank you, God. Let us pray. Oh, God of amazing love, we turn to you with a big thank you today. You are at work in our lives. You have led us, not by might, nor by power, but by your life-giving spirit. You have dealt bountifully with us. Young people have grown and graduated. The lost have been found, even this very day. And we say together, thank you, God. We pray for those who cry out for help, who lament, who seek hope. We pray for those who seek restoration in the wake of trauma, for those looking for work or a change in their employment, for those who anticipate losses and changes in their health or life situations, for those awaiting treatment for cancer, especially for Roger, and for those whose treatments are in progress or are changing, especially for Flynas and Manfred and for George. We pray for those who are in hospital and for those who journey alongside them, for those whose bodies are dying and who are being carried into your complete embrace. And for those who grieve the death of their person, their loved one, especially we pray today for Tiffany and her mom, Elsie, as Elsie's sister just has died today. You sit with each of us by your presence, bring your healing and your hope. We say together, thank you, God. And we pray for your people everywhere in the world. You have called us to live out of your bountifulness, to honor the day of small things, to meditate on your invitations, to delight in your opportunities, to follow in the way of Jesus, and to work for the good of all, especially for those of the family of faith. You do walk with us, gracious God. By your wisdom, give us energy and compassion. We say together, thank you, God. And we do thank you for your intervention in the many situations around our world that need your justice, God, through the seeds that you sow through the actions of your people in the world. So we pray for the well-being of the pollinators and the little ones in the world and their impact on healthy ecosystems. We pray for nourishing food for the hungry, for healthy appetites, and for healing for addictions. We pray for boldness to follow your spirit's lead so that the kingdom of heaven, the family of God, may provide nests for those who need home. And we pray for the steadiness to sow, to weed, and to harvest each in their season. You invite us into your paths of peace, and we say again together, thank you, God. And we pray as Jesus invited us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> For all that God has done for us, for our creation, our preservation, for all the gifts of life, and most of all, for the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, and for his inestimable love, we bring to God our tithes and our offerings and our very lives and present them to God in thanks. Please stand. that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me, who the sun sets free. As you go, go with the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace be upon the whole community, and love with faith, and grace be with all those who have an undying love for the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be all the glory, along with the Father and the Holy Spirit, the one God, now and forever. Amen. And just before we go, it was uh, three years ago when COVID struck, and we were overwhelmed with having to shift quickly in how we ministered. And Esther said, you guys are doing a lot. Let, could I do the bulletin? And then she said, you know, you guys are doing a lot. Could I help with the newsletter? And then I was going away, and she said, well, I can also take over the church email. And that has been the pattern over the last few years. Esther kept saying, well, I could do that. Well, I could do that. And so it is with gratitude that we thank Esther for these three years of serving us in this way, for hard work, long hours, <laughs> very diligent attention to everything that she is doing, uh, very high standards, and uh, of more than anything, of course, her friendship. And so we have a gift for her if you join me in thanking her for this. There's cake downstairs to celebrate further. Chocolate cake. Chocolate, chocolate cake. <laughs>